Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, today's review is on a Shallon oil-filled radiator. Now, it's getting really, really cold here now. It is now, uh, what's the date? 10th of December 2022 here in the UK. Um, this uh, last two or three nights have been really cold, like minus two, minus four the other morning. So... As you'll know, I basically live in my shed and it's beautifully warm and heated with a great DeLonghi oil-filled radiator I've got behind me. I only use the house for going to bed, bathroom and kitchen for cooking. I've got a under um, an under blanket in the heated under blanket in the bedroom, but it has been getting cold in there now. As you know, fuel costs are very high. I'm not going to run the whole house, just to eat a couple of rooms. So I've decided to get another oil-filled radiator for the bedroom, hence this review. So I'll be going through it very, very soon in full detail. Um, I'll just show you first, I've got quite a sort of collection of, that I've built up over the years, fan heaters. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. <laughs> I've got, as aforementioned, the DeLonghi oil-filled radiator behind me. I've also got this little tiny Beldre oil-filled radiator. And I've been mentioning all of them. And I was going to include in this review of the, the Shallon one, which I will show you any minute. It's in the bedroom at the moment, which is where it's going to stay. Um, I was going to show you comparing it in performance to the fan heater and and and, and the others, but realised that would uh, detract from just this because it's just a pure review of um, that heater with some of the um, comparison with this DeLonghi behind me built in. If I compared it to the fan heaters as well, it'd go on far far too long, and you know they go on a bit anyway. My videos, so I'm just going to confine this one to the uh, the review and the test on the Shallon. And compare it to the DeLonghi. I will be doing another video though, another upload on some calling it something like fan heaters versus oil filled radiators. Um, spoiler alert to me, oil filled radiators are way better. Fan heaters, a couple of advantages, but, but we'll get to that in that video. So, back to this one. I saw this on Amazon. Um, I can't lift it up to you now because it's like I say, it's, it's too heavy to do that and it's in the bedroom. So, uh, it's very similar to the DeLonghi I've had behind me, oil-filled rod with a timer on it, thermostat. I've had this, well, must be easily 15 years because I got it for the observatory behind when I was in the little room, and that's that's been up 15, 15 years. So uh, without further ado, this is the one I got on uh, Amazon, and uh, we'll have a look at it and show you the pictures and the price of it now. And I will put a link in the description uh where I got it from Amazon and uh, due disclosure if you do click on uh, any of the links if they've got affiliated in front of them that means if you do buy something from that session I will get a small commission it's very very small but the, the pennies help this channel uh, keep going so uh, I'll put a link in the description below and uh, let's have a look at it now on Amazon okay so you can see here this is the choice on uh, Amazon we've got this one here Devola a two kilowatt one for 68 pounds uh similar that's um i don't know how many fins that is this one here is uh imperial a nine fin for 64 pounds russell hobbs um tiny little thing 650 watts for 30 quid now this is the one i got this uh shallon shalen or whatever um and i got the 11 finned one 11 fin with timer and uh, that w it's now 69.95 if you have a look here here's my order details if you can see here it's 59 46 because i got it at the black um black friday sort of thing that genuinely was 10 pounds off it so uh yeah that's that some other ones a brand name Zanussi there 2.3 kilowatts almost as much 11 fin roughly the same price the um, digital thermostat now that may appeal to you a bit more but um, to me I just wanted a simple timer 
as you know, I do like my gadgets, but it, when it comes to just like a timer on a heater, I like the little pull out tabs one. It's much, much simpler to understand, and you can set a lot more on off periods if you needed it. Also, this, uh, as you see, the Zanussi one has got that standard sort of fins that are just thin all the way around, whereas the, uh, the one I got, I'll show you properly in close up on the real thing. They've got like a bit of a turned turned round thing on the on the top there. You can see where it's sort of like so that gives it a bit more surface area. And uh, you got your thermostat knob at the top there, your two switches. I'll go through this in detail on the actual applied. So that's uh, that's the one I got. So I was curious to who uh, Shallon or Shalen were. Obviously, they're, they're sort of trying to make the name look like a German name. They've got two little dots there over the C. And uh, it's so you think it'd be a German name, but here there's no dots over it. And this is their Facebook page. And they are actually, it's a brand name owned by a company called, if we go into here, um, called Netagon. I just did a, a search for Shallon Company. And here is Netagon, and we just click on their website. All sorts of stuff, and they're based in, uh, in Run was it Runcorn? Yeah, there we are. Chandler's Court, Runcorn. So, a British-based uh, company, Shallon, but like I said, the actual uh, heater itself will be like many others uh, manufacturing in China. But I found that the, you know, the, the best value... Uh, when you're looking for it, look for the amount of fins it's got. I mean, there's one there now. It's got a remote control. Again, that's no use to me. I can reach right behind me in my shed and, and do it. But it might be of use to some people. Um, this what this Von House one, that's got switches just like me. DeLonghi. That's 11 fins, but it's 85 quid. If you want an actual DeLonghi, the latest one, the Dragon, for 152 quid you'll get like three of these nearly for uh, the, the price of, of this so uh, yeah it seemed good value that okay so that uh, that was the one i got and we'll be seeing it very very shortly um i'm not doing a, a proper unboxing because it just came in a plain cardboard box um, but it's out of the box now and all you get is a couple of little leaflets um they do do make me laugh sometimes these leaflets i mean this one warning correct fitting of casters where are we I'll read it to you. It says, uh, "No, well, when correctly fitted, the casters should be at the bottom of the unit, as Sagon above, not shown. Sagon, <laughs> as shown above, while the control panel is at the top of the unit. For detailed instructions on the correct fitting of casters, please refer to the manual supplied with this appliance. If the casters are incorrectly fitted at the top of the unit, the radiator may leak oil. So it's telling you to fit the casters at the bottom, not the top." Now, who in their right mind would fit them with the thing upside down? I suppose somebody somewhere in the world did that and ended up in an accident and sued them or something, so they had to bring this. I remember once Toyota, I think it was, my friend worked at the Toyota garage, and they had to put a label on the battery saying, do not drink the contents of this battery. It, who would drink the contents of a battery? But Toyota had to put the sticker on. That's what I heard anyway. Anyway, back, back to the review. So that's the uh, the book you get with it, and um, pretty pretty useless really. It just tells you the uh, um, how to operate the timer and stuff like that. One thing I didn't put in my review, which we'll see shortly, on the timer. I've explained what all the in and out settings are on here for the the times and the timed constant and uh, off button here. But this little tiny dial, you'll see it in a minute in close-up. Uh, I didn't mention that. I wondered what it was myself. And all it is, it goes round. Even when the thing is turned off, at the, at the switches, as long as it's plugged into the mains, this thing is going round. So it's basically just like a, a mains indicator telling you that, uh, that it's plugged in and it's working. Uh, but it's, a, it's of no use, of no consequence. Now, one thing in this instructions, it says on it, and this is wrong, 
Before attempting to fit the feet, turn the appliance upside down and place on a flat firm surface. Well, you can't turn it upside down on a flat firm surface because it's got a curved top, it just topples over. So it's easier doing this with two people. Um, holding the product securely, attach the front caster bar. The front caster bar has five holes. And it says the rear one has three holes. Well, they're both exactly the same. Again, as you'll see in a minute, both the wheels are uh, the, the caster bars a bit the wheels are on are exactly the same the duplicates of each other there's just three holes in each one so it doesn't matter which goes front and back uh, they're a universal part and again i show it already on the um, radiator but it's just like a big u-bolt which is threaded each side and you just put that under the the curve of of the front bit of it and then the caster bar goes over with the wing nuts. Um, but I just sort of point that out. There isn't a front and a rear one, a five hole and a three hole. The both three holes are both exactly the same. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so there's the data badge, uh, Shallon, with the two little dots. Yeah, I'm making it look a German name, but probably no links with Germany whatsoever. Uh, made in China, like everything is. 2.5 kilowatts, 2,500 watts there. That's the claimed um, total output. Uh, we'll be testing that in a bit. I'll show you what it uh, actually is. So, yeah, there's all the information, uh, should you need it. So here's the base of the, the Shallon. These wheels, they're held on with like a U-bolt goes under this front fin here and sticks through here and then these wing nuts go on you can see the, the pretty sort of crummy wing nuts really but they do the job they're just to hold the feet on and as you can see here as I mentioned before in the instructions it says the front one has five holes well it doesn't it's just got one two and that hole there which goes over a pin and it's exactly the same as the rear caster assembly so both these are identical parts there is no five holes in the front one they've both got through so it doesn't matter which you put front which you put back you can tell the quality isn't as good these casters they're not they turn but not brilliantly that are a, a lot cheaper constructed than the DeLonghi but the fins as you can see the fins go round they're the actual fin inside there a lot of radiators just leave it like that this has got a bit of surface area this bit here goes round and that so it increases the sort of width there to that but again, not as much metal attached to it as the DeLonghi has. So here's the front of it. I've put this white sticker there on the knob to make it easier to see where it is because it's just an indentation in the plastic. And there's no temperature readings, no numbers or whatever around there, just an increasing stripe. So that's on minimum, that's on maximum. Again, the feel of the plastic isn't as good as the DeLonghi these two switches it's normal and your time switch there's the com common to what's used on a lot of appliances but I like the simplicity of these and you move this little thing here at the moment you can see we're set on constant the little i dash there means we're in the constant setting if you move it down to the middle there it's on timed and if you have it there that's on off again not it's a slightly longer lever on the delonghi a bit better to get at than that you've got to so you use your thumbnail and all these little indentations are the on off settings so as you pull them out that's the time it's on so i don't know what you can see on that i've got them pulled out between 9 30 and 2 30 
that's the cheap hours of o octopus go faster tariff that I'm on and then when you, you push these little bits in and when they're in it's not on so it will come on at 9.30 as the time goes round that's where you set the time so at the moment it's showing 10 a.m. 11 a.m. and like I say I'll show this on we're on timed now here we'll turn it on there's no light come on because it, we're in an off period but as I'm coming round now 1400, 1500, 1600, so 5pm you can see there now the ones that are out between 9.30pm and 2.30am so if you look at this arrow again that's now 7 o'clock tonight, 8 o'clock tonight 9 o'clock tonight was it coming up to 9.30 that has now come on see that switch is on you can hear it heating up and then as we go around past midnight 1 a.m. 2 and then gets to 2 30 time but as I pushed it back 2 30 you saw the switch go off and so you could have these little tiny tappets represent there is like what one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's like four per hour, so each one represents 15 minutes. So you could have it on, off, on, off every 15 minutes if you liked. But dead, dead easy to understand compared to the electronic ones. Um, but again, it seems to work well. I don't know for how long. I'll be very pleased if it lasts as long as a DeLonghi, but yeah, definitely the quality of the plastics. Um, feel this little switch here quality of that knob the wheels on the casters are nothing like as good as the DeLonghi so as you saw there it's dead easy just screwed in two legs on and the timer again is very very easy to understand so as it claims in the instructions on switch 1 it's 1 kilowatt if you turn switch 1 off and turn switch 2 on that's 1.5 kilowatts both on together 2.5 kilowatt output so let's just see how accurate now we're plugging them into a watt meter how accurate they are is it actually one kilowatt on one is it 2.5 kilowatts on uh, on all of them on uh, let's see that now so we just stick one on just one only on the switch is supposed to be one kilowatt if we switch switch two on that's one and a half kilowatts both on together two and a half kilowatts so we'll switch switch one on and as you can see it's 1.16 so switch one let's write this down 1161 and I don't know whether you can hear that you can hear this heating up which you can't with the DeLonghi little ticks once it's up to temperature it stops but it's uh, it's not too bad. So that's switch 1, which it claims to be 1 kilowatt. It's 1.1. 1 .1. Switch 2 only, which it claims to be 1.5 kilowatts. And that's actually 1.7. 1 1.73 kilowatts. If we sit both on together, so they were both both switches on. We're now up to 2.8 kilowatts. So that's 2.8 kilowatts, which is a fair bit more than the 2.5 kilowatts it claims. So, uh, as you saw there, uh, quite a bit over uh, what it claims uh, with both switches on together. It should be putting out, uh, uh, consuming 2.5 kilowatts of power, and it's 2.8 kilowatts of power, so nearer 3 kilowatts. So, I decided to uh, put it on just on the one um, bar switch, just on this one switch, the one kilowatt one, and leave it in the shed and get it up nice and warm and get it stabilised. 
and see um how sort of hot i can get the the shed just on one so it did take a, a quite a while because we only had the one and we'll be doing it on full blast shortly so let's see how hot it gets the shed now just with switch one on just uh, the lowest one kilowatt so you can see it's at 28 degrees now and we're down to 4.9 degrees outside and if we go over to the heater Turn this light out just to show you. So you can see we're still on just one bar, so one kilowatt. And that one kilowatt, I've got the thermostat set on maximum. That one kilowatt has not gone off for the whole of this time. So it's been on non stop. It's putting out, I cannot touch that. It's so hot, just on one kilowatt. And that one kilowatt non stop has reached 28 degrees in here which is far too hot for me so obviously i'd have it at a lower temperature so it just shows the biggest surface area um works wonders even on one kilowatt it's enough to heat the thing and if i turn it down now see it's clicking there so that's the 28 degrees just there before it was down here so if i left it on eventually it might not have enough with just the one kilowatt to get much hotter than that but obviously i'd put i'd turn that off and then put it on one and a half kilowatts or two and a half kilowatts but it just shows you this one is not shutting off until it has reached temperature it hasn't reached that temperature yet which is probably 35 or something ridiculously hot and it's not keep cycling on and off like the uh, the little one does. So uh, as you saw there, just one switch on is capable of getting the shed up to temperature. Wasn't freezing outside, granted, but it raised it all, all them degrees uh, and will maintain that temperature. And if you've just got the one switch on and, and it gradually gets warm, the thermostat is very accurate. You're getting like the 20s, the low 20s with it about halfway what happens though is what you'd normally do and what i normally do is i put it on full blast both switches on uh to get the room hot it's, it's pointing out it's full here there to get the room as hot as, as quickly as possible but what happens then i'll sort of demonstrate on this little um little one if you've got both switches on and on the uh, shallon one i'm testing that's like I'm giving out 2.8 kilowatts of power it gets very 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 hot obviously that's what we want and the thermostat which is built into to the wall here i think gets like overwhelmed by the internal heat it's not responding to room temperature your room temperature it comes through these vents all around that's why it says do not cover because it, it wants a flow of air through to measure like the room temperature to, to bring it on off on off maintaining that temperature but when you've got them all and it happens with them all on both on full blast even with the thermostat on number six it sometimes shuts off at six because it's getting to six inside here before the actual room has got to number six if you're with me so it's a bit hard to uh, to explain but um like the internal thermometer gets like overwhelmed by the amount of heat around it and it thinks hey i've reached six i'm going to turn off but the room hasn't reached six um so once you've got that room up to temperature sort of have a look at your thermostat turn it off with uh, a thermostat in, in the room or whatever and uh, or when you feel warm just then turn turn it back onto one and turn it back to the setting you're at. you just got to experiment to see where it is in that particular room to maintain that temperature. If they had a remote thermostat on a wall, say a little um, battery type thing like this uh, sender from the old weather station, if they had one of them on the wall, sending a signal to this that would be much more accurate because that would be a true room temperature but to have the the room thermostat in the red hot block of metal will overwhelm it so uh, we'll see now how quick it can get the room up to temperature on full blast but you'll see that um compared to what you've just seen there with the thermostat shutting off about halfway you'll see it gets a lot hotter inside it's uh, 
I hope this is uh, self-explanatory, this bit anyway. Okay, so this is a test of how quick it will heat the room up. At the moment, as you see, the time is 9.46, and the shed is at a temperature of 12.5 degrees. That's the white reading on the left. On the right, the green, 6 degrees is the outside temperature. The 59 is the humidity in here. So 12.6 degrees at 9.46. And I'm now going to turn the heater on. So, Alexa, turn shed heater on. Okay. So we've now got it on full 2.5 kilowatts. So let's see... Uh, how hot it gets the shed in one hour. So we're now an hour later, 10.45 at the top there, and you can see the temperature now in here has reached 21 and a half degrees. So it's gone up nine full degrees in an hour. And that was with it on, on both. You can see there, now it has reached nearly, because we've got both heaters on in here, both switches the the one kilowatt and the one and a half so we have a total of two and a half kilowatts output we're nearly at that's on maximum there if i turn it down now it's shutting off there now that isn't sort of like the actual sort of temperature of the room it's been sort of like fooled a bit but it's inside temperature as you saw with the other one last night, when I had it on just one bar, it got the room up to 28, was it 28 degrees, yeah, on one bar. And this stat was down there because the internal wasn't being affected so much because there was only one of the heating elements on, if that makes any sense. But, um, so, as soon as you'd get to like a comfortable temperature of 21, that's like a sort of quite a nice comfy temperature, you would turn one element off and then you're just on the one kilowatt and that would maintain it at that temperature no problem in here so uh, yeah just one hour and it reached it increased it by nine nine degrees so this next test is uh, I was curious to how long it is actually on and how long is it actually off because as you know, the way a thermostat works, when it's calling for heat, it switches on. When it's it's satisfied, it switches off, switches on, switches off. And the good thing about oil-filled radiators is they retain the heat really well. I'll be going more into this in the Fanny to versus um, oil heater video I'll be doing. But when a fan heater shuts off, that is it. It's, it's cold within like seconds it doesn't retain any heat and then the room cools and it comes back on which makes them much less efficient an oil filled radiator is much more efficient because even when it's turned off it's still like a chunk of hot metal now the main thing to look for and i'll emphasize this at the end summing up as well is the surface area the delonghi behind me even though it's only two kilowatts puts out as much as the shallon one because it's got a much, much greater surface area. I'll be showing you that again um, when I, I can, I'll show you bits about the uh, the DeLonghi. But the Shallon has more than most. It's got more than... Um, most of them are like this. They're just thin sheets, the actual sort of units that it's made up of. That is it. As you saw on the Shallon, it's got a bit that goes over there and down there. It's got like a little U-bit welded on each one, which increases a bit the surface area of it. But the DeLonghi behind me, and, the, and I've, I've decided to keep this in the shed because this is my favourite of, of them all. Again, I'll show you at the end. It's a much, much greater surface area. The, the, there's bits like come on and there's a wide emitter. So even though it's a couple of less fins, less than the Shollen, and a less consumption than the Shollen, it puts out every bit as much heat. So, like I said, look out for the surface area of the things. This is why they're a lot more money. 150 quid was too much for me. Triple the price of this. If it had been, say, 80 quid or whatever, I'd have gone for it over the Shollen. And, uh, but 
it, it, like I said, this shoulder I'm testing ain't a bad one, and I'm keeping it, and it, it, it's still pretty good. But uh, I was curious to how often it was on, how often it was on. So over a, an hour's um, switched on, maintaining the temperature, once the room is built up to that temperature, how long is it actually switched on in that hour? So let's have a look now. I've connected up to the watt meter, which measures the com the, the full process of time the amount of time it is switched on in an hour so i'll show you that now in one hour and in two hours i've switched on how long it's actually on okay so you can see at the moment green one here the outside temperature we're at zero degrees outside and i can confirm it is icy the car is covered in ice we're at 22.2 degrees in here now and it's just on the 22.35 the time. So if you remember them settings, we'll come back in about an hour. So 22 degrees in here, zero degrees outside and 22.35. As you can see, the heater, I'll turn this light out, the light at the moment is not on. It's set there on the thermostat and we're on the one bar only. I'm just going to, just to show you what the consumption is, I'm just going to turn that up, just to show you, all right. I'll just turn that up a midges, just to bring it on, to show you, right, as you can see now we're on, and that shows we're using 1.168 kilowatts, I'll just turn it back, that midges back to where it was, and if we set, if we press this now, first of all, we'll go on to so you can see the clock ticking at the top, and it's using 1.09 kilowatts at the moment. When the heater switches off, as it does to maintain the temperature, that clock at the stop at the top stops and it's not using any uh, any power so we'll come back in an hour from now it's now 2237 we'll come back at 2337 and see how many kilowatts that has used okay so as you can see now we're an hour on it's 2337 temperature is in here now is 21.5 and before it was 22 0.2 so it's just gone down 0.7 of a degree so it's accurate to about a degree I would say this a thermostat uh, you can still see it's zero degrees outside if we go over now to the heater at the moment it's in see it's in a on setting but in this past hour it's been on and off and if you look there at the top we're using the same current now, 1.183 kilowatts, but you can see in one hour it's actually only been on for 30 minutes. 30 minutes 58, 30 minutes 59, coming up to 31 minutes now. So in this one hour it's um, it's been on for 30 minutes and off for 30 minutes, maintaining that temperature. So as you can see this uh, basically one kilowatt heater uh, it's just gone off there I don't know what you saw this one kilowatt heater is using sort of like 500 watts in an hour just to maintain this uh, temperature in here of 21 degrees in uh, in an hour and it's still zero outside we'll come back in one hour and uh, we'll give it its final check for tonight okay so we're just coming up to another hour now so it's now 037 any second now and you'll see the entire temperature is at 21.3 we've dropped 0.2 of a degree but if you notice the outside temperature is now 0, 0.0 and uh, an hour ago it was 0 0.5 so it's actually a half a degree colder outside but it's only dropped 0.2 of a degree here inside and that's it exactly two hours now so 120 minutes and it's in its uh, it's switched on at the moment and if we have a look at the meter you can 
Let's see there. 59.34. So in 120 minutes, it's been switched on for 59. So it's almost half and half, half on, half off. But it's actually been off longer than it's been on while it's on there. You can see it's still the 1.134 kilowatts. And uh, that's just now coming up to one hour of switch on time for a two hour period. So uh, that shows uh, how efficient uh, an oil filled radiator is. So uh, there you have it. It is actually just on exactly, almost to the minute, exactly half on and half off. So in any one hour, it's only actually on for that like half an hour. So uh, when you're working out things, how uh, cheap or expensive they are to run, and uh, don't forget, you won't be using like one kilowatt in an hour to heat a room like this. You'll be using only 500 watts. Now, when all said and done, it is quite a small room, as you can see. I've measured it. It's 20 cubic metres. It's got a very low ceiling. It's on like 4 metres by 2 metres by 2.5 metres. And it's really well... It's a wooden shed, but it's really well insulated and double glazed window. Um, so most rooms will be a bigger volume, so it's, it's not going to be that cheap to run. But it just shows you somewhere like this, if you've got a very well insulated room... It's, uh, it's quite economical to run them with this. And during the day, like I said, it is now 25 past three as I'm doing this. I've got the shed plugged into my car. Um, see the other video up here on running, uh, if you've got an EV car with a vehicle to load outlet, what you can run off it. I've got the heater on. I'm doing this on my PC. I'm editing all the stuff, watching TV all sorts, all running off the car, which I've charged up overnight at 8.25 pence per kilowatt hour. And uh, I'm using that during the day. And at half nine, I'll unplug it and plug the shed back into the mains. Now, I'm going to add on here um, the measurements I took with the DeLonghi and go into that into a bit more detail. But if you just want to stop here, if you're just bothered about the review of this heater, then by all means, quit it here and uh, just play the rest if you're interested but i'm going to tag on to the end of here the same sort of measurements taken with the delonghi just to show you the difference between the two and then i'll do me my final summing up at the very very end so let's have a look at the delonghi stuff now okay so this is with the delonghi dragon plugged into the watt meter and on the first switch position you can see it's just a kilowatt so where are we? 1001 watts as yes, we turn the first one off now and we'll put the second one on so the second one is a bit more 1165 ish watts and if we put them both on together we're at 2096 watts so it's supposed to be two kilowatts it's just over it's sort of like two point two point one kilowatts or it's going down a bit now so yeah roughly two kilowatts what it claims each one of those switches is about a kilowatt each Okay, so now this is testing the DeLonghi Dragon 2. And we're going to start at uh, internal temperature there of 10.8, so a couple of degrees lower than the, the one we just tested. And um, we'll see how many degrees it raises in, in an hour, just like the other one. So, again, I've got it both heaters on, one and two, and round at number six. And... Uh, Alexa, turn on shed heater. Okay. No, oh, I'm going we're on timer on here. So yeah, so we can see we're on now. On six, and see how many degrees this has raised the uh, temperature in one hour like the other. Okay, we're now at one hour later with the Delonghi. 
we started at 12.19 it's just coming up to 13.19 and you can see the temperature the other one did a, ten, a 9 degree rise the uh, Shallon the subject of this review did a 9 degree rise in one hour well we started this at 10.8 so add 9 to that that should be 19.8 but as you can see this has reached 21 degrees so the DeLonghi has actually got the room a degree hotter again we're still on full you can see both lights are on but as we turn the thermostat down I'll try and do it so you can see they go out when it's at number five well like I said the room isn't quite at number five now we've only got that much before they'll shut off and again that is that is red hot but it's been overwhelmed a bit the thermostat by the amount of heat that's on on there with them both turned on it's much more accurate when you've just got one of the heaters on but yeah as you saw there a degree hotter on full but this is only a two kilowatt heater so half a kilowatt less and it got the room one degree hotter so that just shows you what good design of um, fins are. As you can see on this, we've got on the DeLonghi, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fins. But those fins, it's hard to show on here. It's a bit dirty and rusty. It is a few years old, this. The fins go out, they sort of like spread out curve round there and then you've got this external bit so if you count the total surface area there is a lot on this all them are giving more surface area and that is heating the room more efficiently than one without them so uh, yeah pretty good heater had it a few years um, the shallon not quite as efficient obviously half a kilowatt more and uh, that's because it's not got as much surface area on the fins so worth remembering when you're looking for one so in conclusion um the shallon heater the subject of this test is a good heater it works well um it's just not quite as good as the delonghi in fact i'd say it was a, a fair way behind the delonghi it got the delonghi has got a bigger surface area as you saw it's it's more efficient because even with less power um it got the room a, a degree hotter quicker i didn't show the how on it's on and off in an hour but it was about the same it was uh, using about 500 watts uh, per hour roughly the same um it's much better made the quality of the plastics feels better the casters feel better it feels tougher at the bottom and everything uh, well, it feels tougher all over um like I said, the surface area is the main thing, and I'll keep emphasising that, but that's the main thing in this. If you're looking through Amazon or eBay or whatever, just try and get one with loads of extra area, because it's giving you something for nothing, really. The the heating element is putting its heat into them that area, and when it's turned off, that is radiating into the room. So the, the shallow one, you can hear heating up. You may have heard in some of the, the videos earlier on, uh, like a ticking noise, that's it heating up. The, the DeLonghi doesn't do that at all. The DeLonghi is at least 15 years old. I've no idea how long the uh, the Shallon's going to last. So if you see a DeLonghi 1, this is a Dragon 2. Uh, said a Dragon 4, at least now. Um, if you see one uh, at a good price, I would, I would snap it up. But yes, I would recommend this. Um, Fan heaters have got some advantages. I'll be going into that properly in in, in the other video with fan heaters versus oil filled radiators. The good thing about fan heaters is it's so so small and compact you could take it camping with you and things like that. But for a situation like this where it's portable, that's another thing. That the DeLonghi weighs about twice as much. I haven't weighed it exactly, but it's a lot heavier to lift than the Shollen one. Um if you're just moving it along level ground, it's easy enough because they're all on casters. But if you're lifting it like into the shed or out of the shed, and I do wish they'd put a handle each end and not just at the front, 
digging your hand into the fins um it's much much heavier so it, I, I won't call it um that portable really any of these but once they're in the room if you're buying something to stay permanently in a room a conservatory or something like that they're absolutely ideal and if it's something like a greenhouse or something that little one little beldre one would would be fine but that just cannot cope it's a one and a half kilowatts not much surface area it just does not get the, the shed hot, hot enough the poor little thing can't cope so yeah uh sorry to have waffled on even more than usual but i did want to include all them um readings on the the watt meter to show you how accurate it was again you saw how accurate the delonghi was it was only a few watts over its claimed thing the the shollen one was like 2.8 kilowatts instead of the claim 2.5 so um yeah it all adds up to a, a better value for the um Delonghi, but the shollen is a good buy so i hope this has been of some use to you if you noticed in the video this little um where are we weather station i will be doing a review on that for soon i'm going to give it a thorough test i've had it about three weeks i want to test it in all weathers hopefully snow we might get a bit of snow and i can see if it shows the snow but so far i'm absolutely loving it the temperature readings are great and everything so i'll be doing a review of that i'll be doing the fan eater versus uh, oil filled radiators as well so uh, if you haven't already subscribed please click the please click the shed here on the left to subscribe uh, click the bell icon underneath to be notified of any future uploads Hope it's been of some use to you. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very, very much. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks very, very much for watching this. Bye for now.